I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a reproductive endocrinologist with over 15 years experience helping people build their families and helping people with miscarriage. And today we're gonna to talk about five important things to understand and learn about miscarriage. So today we're going to learn five important things about miscarriage. We're going to learn about its definition, really clarify what a miscarriage is, what is a recurrent pregnancy loss, define some definitions that you might see in your medical chart that can be confusing. We'll go over how common miscarriage is, and we'll talk about some solid next steps and how you can have a discussion with your doctor and get an evaluation for miscarriage. So let's get started. First of all, what is a miscarriage? A miscarriage is basically a pregnancy that stops developing before viability. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists in the United States defines a miscarriage as a pregnancy that stops developing before 20 weeks gestation. There's different types of miscarriages. We should talk about the difference between a biochemical miscarriage and a clinical miscarriage because your doctor might make these distinctions for you. A biochemical miscarriage is a miscarriage that stops developing before you can see anything on ultrasound or before somebody might be able to pass something or do a DNC um, that you can test outside of the body. Um, a biochemical miscarriage could be a positive pregnancy test and then a period that's a few days late. It could be a positive blood test with your doctor's office that's starting to go up, but then it starts to go down and stops developing before you can see anything on ultrasound. Typically, a biochemical miscarriage doesn't get past five five and a half weeks of gestation or development. A clinical miscarriage is a miscarriage that happens after you can see something on ultrasound or you can test something that you can remove from the uterus. So even if you have just an empty gestational sac, or sometimes people call it a blighted ovum, which is kind of a, an older term, um, we more normally call it an empty gestational sac, or you see um, a fetus that's developing with or without a heartbeat, you can see something on ultrasound and the pregnancy just does not continue to develop. That is considered a clinical miscarriage. And the reason it's important to um, distinguish between these is just it helps your doctor think through causes and sort of define a little bit about your history. And so they'll ask you these questions. Now, some of my patients have had frustrating experiences with family and friends um, and even other healthcare providers that have been dismissive about their biochemical miscarriages. Sometimes people will say, oh, well, you weren't even really pregnant or it wasn't that far along. And you really can't define someone's grief. If you felt dismissed, it's not okay. This pregnancy did count. Uh, egg and sperm did fertilize an embryo started developing to the point where a pregnancy hormone could be detected either on a home pregnancy test or a blood test in the lab. And it really does count. I think it's important to note that miscarriage really does not include some two other first trimester pregnancy issues, an ectopic pregnancy or a molar pregnancy. So these are our non-viable pregnancies. An ectopic pregnancy can happen anywhere outside of the uterine cavity. Typically it's a pregnancy that implants in the fallopian tube. This can actually be a medical emergency and something that needs medical attention because if it's not addressed, then the pregnancy can continue to develop, result in bleeding and truly be a surgical emergency. A molar pregnancy is a rare pregnancy complication in which the genetics of the embryo lead to a non-viable development of fetal cells that will not result in a viable pregnancy or baby and actually also needs medical attention because these cells can divide and grow so quickly that it can actually um, metastasize and um, needs close medical attention. But an ectopic pregnancy and a molar pregnancy are not considered um, miscarriages as far as this discussion is concerned. So what is recurrent miscarriage? So before 2013, a recurrent miscarriage was defined as three or more clinical miscarriages and only people who had had three or more clinical miscarriages. Remember, this does not include biochemical or early losses. Only people that had three or more clinical miscarriages would be given the option of evaluation and testing in order to diagnose things that can actually lead to recurrent miscarriage. 
the most common cause of first trimester miscarriage is an issue within the embryo. It's a chromosome issue or a genetic issue that has nothing to do with the people that are getting pregnant. But there are some things that can occur in the people that are getting pregnant, like hormone issues, anatomic issues, et cetera, that can lead to an increased risk of multiple miscarriages. But before 2013, it wasn't recommended that those things were evaluated unless someone had three or more clinical miscarriages. In 2013, ASRM updated their definition to say that recurrent miscarriage is still considered three or more miscarriages for academic studies and research trials. But if someone's had two or more clinical miscarriages, then it warrants an evaluation. And this was a dramatic change. And this is something that I learned and happened after my training. So there are going to be physicians out there that were trained before 2013 that are still thinking the definition for testing and treatment should really be three or more clinical miscarriages, but it doesn't end there. I'm going to read this to you. In 2020, ASRM changed their definition of recurrent pregnancy loss to quote, a disease distinct from infertility defined as the spontaneous loss of two or more pregnancies. They took out the word clinical on purpose. There are some studies that have come up in the last five to 10 years that have shown that people with recurrent biochemical miscarriages can have some of the issues that we look for in people with recurrent clinical miscarriages, anatomic issues, hormonal issues, et cetera. And so this liberalization of the definition is really important. And so it, they go on to state each pregnancy loss merits careful review to determine whether specific evaluation of the woman or couple may be appropriate, end quote. And I just think that what's important about this is that any miscarriage should be discussed with your provider and questions should be answered. And if you had two or more miscarriages, it's okay to ask for an evaluation and to get testing. I often have patients who get medical bills or ask to see their medical chart and get really upset and confused with some of the terms that they see in the chart or um, on billing that have to do with their miscarriage. So the word abortion is a medical term and doctors and billing and codes in the medical system use the word abortion to talk about a pregnancy that stops before viability. The word abortion has no value or meaning in why a pregnancy stopped developing, but an abortion can be used as a term for miscarriage and the medical term is abortion. And there's lots of different um, definitions in order to clarify healthcare providers talking to each other through medical charts and billing to kind of understand. And so some important definitions that you might see on your own medical chart are as follows. A threatened abortion is any pregnancy in which there is a little bit of spotting or bleeding. So someone could come in eight weeks pregnant, ha have spotting, bleeding, maybe a little bit of cramping, but on ultrasound, the fetus is growing appropriately. There's an appropriate heartbeat. Um, the pregnancy has not stopped developing. It's not a miscarriage, but it's a threatened miscarriage. So in the chart, it'll say threatened abortion. A missed abortion, you might see in your medical chart, that means that the pregnancy did stop developing and the body just didn't give any signals for it. So Someone can come in for a 10 week ultrasound, um, a viability check, um, have no bleeding, no cramping. And on ultrasound, we see that there's no heartbeat. And it could be that the pregnancy is measuring six or eight weeks along and no heartbeat. And even though that person has been pregnant for 10 weeks, the pregnancy really did stop developing earlier. And it's, so it's called a missed abortion because the body is not giving that signal. Um, you're not seeing bleeding or cramping. And that's what a term that you might see in your medical chart. A spontaneous abortion is a pregnancy that stops developing on its own and it passes from the body spontaneously. So if someone is diagnosed with a miscarriage, oftentimes nothing needs to be done. The own body gets the signal and they'll have bleeding and cramping and the pregnancy will resolve on its own. Um, that's a spontaneous abortion or a spontaneous miscarriage. If people use medication to sort of help soften the cervix and help um, the uterus 
expel the pregnancy or if they do a dilation and curatage, also known as a DNC. This is a medical abortion. Again, I know that word has heavy meaning and is really triggering for a lot of people. This is just a medical term. You could call it a medical miscarriage, but it's really in your chart. It'll say abortion. Okay. And one final term that you might see in medical charts or um, medical terms is a complete abortion. And it just means that the pregnancy is resolved. Um, whether it's that the hormone levels are completely back to zero or someone had a DNC um, or passed the pregnancy spontaneously or with help, the pregnancy is resolved and it's, uh, it's complete. So I just think it's really important to go over these terms because abortion has such a value term and it's, it sort of seems like you read that in your chart and you sort of feel like, oh my gosh, someone thinks that I had an abortion, that I, I chose to end this valued pregnancy. And that's not the case at all. It really is a medical term and it's a way to, to communicate. And I just want you to understand. Number four, it's important to understand just how common miscarriage is. Um, it's not talked about enough and it's so much more common than we realize. One in four clinically recognized pregnancies will stop developing before viability. One in four pregnancies will end in miscarriage. If you include biochemical miscarriages, it's, that number is a lot higher. It's hard to define because people don't always report biochemical miscarriages. We don't always know that they happen. Sometimes people might just have a late period and not even realize that they would have had a positive pregnancy test. Biochemical miscarriages are so much more common and so much more normal than we really realize and talk about. And we're still learning a lot about this. But if you talk to someone or if you're in a room with other people, there's someone else in that room that's also had a miscarriage, but because we don't talk about it, we often feel like it's just us or that we've done something wrong. And it's so much more common than we realize. Um, miscarriage risk can increase in certain situations. So one in four or about a 25% risk of miscarriage that's across the board. But as we get older, both eggs and sperm don't work as well. And so as we age, the miscarriage rate goes up. So specifically for women and age 40, the chance of a miscarriage is actually one in two. So 50, 50 chance of a positive pregnancy test resulting in a live birth. If you've had miscarriages in the past, the risk of miscarriage increases slightly with each loss. So the that risk of one in four, um, that's a very general number, but um, and it can change based on your personal history. And so number five, now that you've learned a little bit about definitions of miscarriage and what recurrent miscarriage is, what are the next steps? Well, the next step is learning more, just like you're doing now. Right now, just learning. You are already learning how to ask questions and advocate for your care. Finding a doctor that will listen to you is really important. And you can start with your primary care doctor. You can start with your um, OBGYN. Um, say, listen, I've had a miscarriage. I've had two miscarriages. I really want to talk about testing and, and options and start the conversation. If you are not getting answers, if you are not getting your questions really listened to, ask somebody else. Some primary OBGYNs or obstetricians will be well-versed in recurrent miscarriage, but a lot won't. It might not be something that they see regularly, might not be something that they've really thought about since their training. Um, and so it's important to ask your provider, you know, do you feel comfortable talking about this or doing the evaluation? Or maybe when would I get referred? Some high-risk obstetricians or maternal fetal medicine doctors will focus on recurrent miscarriage, but they deal a lot more with later pregnancy issues, um, like early delivery, high blood pressure in pregnancy, chronic illness in pregnancy, really the specialists that focus on recurrent first trimester miscarriage, which is when it happens the most often, um, are reproductive endocrinologists like me. So we have learned a lot about first trimester pregnancy and care. And since most miscarriages happen at this time, we're the real experts in this field, but 
not every reproductive endocrinologist is going to be focused on it. And so it's important to do a little research before you have that second opinion or talk to the doctor and learn a little bit if there's something that they really focus on and that they can help you. So I'm hoping that you walk away from this video with a lot more knowledge about the definitions around miscarriage, just how common miscarriage can be, um, how you might see the term abortion in your medical chart and understand why it's there. And a little bit about how to take that next step and understand when to get an evaluation and who to ask. More information on this topic can be found on my website. You can find me on Instagram, on TikTok, and I've written a book just on this topic. So Not Broken, um, an approachable guide to miscarriage and recurrent pregnancy loss. I wrote this for you. You can learn all about definitions evaluation, treatment, lifestyle changes for being healthier and decreasing your risk of miscarriage. I hope this was helpful. Please remember to like, comment, and share this video and stick around for more.